Hello everyone. Welcome back to Dr. K. Prem Primer Video Lecture Series presenting by Dr. K. Prem, that's me. In today's lecture, we'll talk about uh, what is genomic library and how to construct it. Let us first define what is genomic library. A set of recombinant clones that contain all the DNA present in an individual organism is termed as genomic library. You see, a set of recombinant clones that contain all the DNA present in an individual organism is termed as genomic library. So when you want to sequence whole genome, you cannot sequence, you know, from uh, first chromosomes to 20, 23 chromosomes in case of mammals, especially humans, right? So instead of that, if you fragment the, fragment the entire set of uh, DNA or entire, uh, entire genome, and the, each fragment is cloned into the suitable vector, and those vector, those recombinant, recombinants are representing the entire genome in a parts and parts. The collection of recombinant clones, that is called as a genomic library. Genomic library construction has five steps, five steps. The first one is isolation of genome or DNA, total DNA. Second one is fragmentation of DNA. DNA. Third one is DNA fragments and the vectors are ligated. And the fourth one is introduction into the host. And the fifth one is screening and selection of recombinant clones. So construction of genomic DNA has five steps. The first one is isolation of genome or total set of DNA. And the second one is fragmentation of genomic DNA or genome. And third one is ligation of the DNA fragments and the suitable vector. And the fourth one is introduction into the host. And the fifth one is screening and selection of the recombinant clones. You see, isolation of total set of DNA. And the isolated set of total set of DNA is fragmented. Fragment means make a small, small pieces. And those small fragments are cloned into this suitable vector. So if the DNA fragment is uh, 5 KB, you can use the plasmids. If you have 20 KB, you can use the uh, lambda phase uh, replacement vectors. If the DNA fragment is bigger than the 40 KB, you can use the cosmids. So based on the size of the fragment, you can choose the suitable vector, right? And once you ligate both insert or a fragment and the vector, then you introduce into the host cell. That's a fourth step. And the fifth one is screening and selection of recombinants. So genomic DNA library construction has five steps. The first one is isolation of total DNA or set of DNA or genome. The second one is the fragmentation of DNA. And third one is ligation of vector and those DNA fragments. And the fourth one is introduction to the host cell to amplify them. And sixth one is screening and selection of recombinants. Let us see the how to construct the genomic library by using the cartons here. You see, here, this is what is the genome of uh, one organism. Assume that the, that particular organism have 50 KB uh, genome, which total set of uh, DNA. So once you isolate the total set of DNA or DNA from that organism, what you have to do is you have to fragment. You cannot clone the genome as, as this, right? So once you make these small cuts uh, by using the restriction digestion or mechanical sharing, and you get a smaller fragments. Those smaller fragments can be cloned. Here, we are using the ECOR1 enzyme to digest the, this genome of a 50 KB. So ECOR1 enzyme can cut the DNA at every 4,100 base pairs. Means every 4,100 base pairs, the ECOR1 enzyme can cut into the cut. So when you have a 50 KB, 
after digestion of with the E. coli one, roughly you will get the twelve fragments of twelve DNA fragments with the size of four point one kb. So E. coli one is enzyme, right? It is a exonucleated recognized sequence, and it can cut at the at every four point one kb length. See, scanned and the uh, fragment digestion and use these smaller fragments, right? So you see after digestion of, uh, after digestion with the E. coli one, the 50 KB genome is uh, fragmented into the, into the 4.1 KB fragments. So the DNA fragments are lesser than the 5 KB, then you can uh, choose the uh, plasmid as a vector. So plasmid can uh, accommodate the uh, 5 KB uh, insert easily, hence you are choosing the uh, plasmid as a vector. So based on the size of the insert or based upon the size of the fragment, you can change the vector system. Whenever the uh, fragment size is uh, 4 KB or 5 KB or 6 KB, you can choose the plasmids. If it is 10 KB, you can use the uh, lambda phase uh, insertion vectors. If the 20 KB, you can use the lambda phase replacement vectors. If it is 40 KB, you can use the cosmids. Right here, we are using the plasmid vector, uh, and uh, that vector also digests with the same enzyme. Right now, DNA fragments. We and uh, uh, in you know the vector have the compatible complementary hands so that if the DNA fragments and the digested vector is ligated, that's right. So vector and inserts are ligated and they are uh, going to be uh, have a ligation by T4 DNA ligase. So when a DNA fragment uh, when a DNA fragment with the complementary or uh, compatible cohesive ends come together, then they are ligated. Then they are ligated by using the T4 DNA ligase. This is the third step. And the fourth step is introduction into the host cell. Since we are using the plasmid vector and we are transforming them into the E. coli. And the, once you transform, you have to screen or select the recombinants, right? So selection and screening and selection of the recombinants, that's a fifth step in the genomic DNA library construction. Now you have uh, these 12 uh, recombinant clones. You see, we got uh, 12 recombinant clones, which are, uh, what is a recombinant? A recombinant is a, a vector plus insert. That chimeric DNA is called as a recombinant. These are the recombinant clones you got. And you see, uh, when you when we digested the genome or total set of DNA, here we got uh, almost uh, 12 uh, DNA fragments uh, with the size of uh, 4.1 kb, right? So now you look into the, we got the 12 clones and you see 11th clone have the A fragment. And the ninth clone have a B fragment. And 12th clone is having C. And uh, third clone have, have a D fragment. And the fourth clone have a E fragment. And seventh clone have a F fragment. And fifth clone have a five fragment, fra G fragment. Sixth clone is H fragment. And the eighth clone is uh, I fragment. Second clone is J fragment. And 10th clone is having K fragment, and the first clone is having L fragment. So the total DNA fragments of the, the DNA or the genome are randomly cloned. So entire genome is fragmented and cloned into the suitable vector. Now, when now the DNA, total set of the DNA or genome of the particular organism is, is uh, placed in a, a different clones with the different lengths or, or the same length it depends on this where it depends on the 
restriction digestion rest, it depends on the fragmentation so you see these are the different clones but each clone have a different different uh, fragment all together they are representing the entire genome of the organism yes or no so here the entire genome is entire genome is placed in a different uh, clones those all clones those collection of clones all together they are representing the entire genome right so the these these uh, clones which are representing the entire dna of organism hence they are called as the genomic library you see so when uh, when when dna is fragmented and ligated with the suitable vector the whole genome is now in the different clone different uh, recombinant clones right this is what is the genomic library so you see a set of recombinant clones that contain all the dna present in present in an individual organism is termed as a genomic library so genomic library means the set of recombinant clones that contain the all the dna present in in an individual organism right individual organism genome is fragmented and inserted into the suitable vector right so those the total number of total number of uh, recombinant clones which are required to re required for cloning of entire genome right so here you have here we have uh, almost 12 fragments here you have 12 clones the 12 clones are representing the entire genome of uh, an organism in parts and parts that's why these clones are these clones which are representing the entire genome as a parts and parts hence that that this collection or set of recombinant clones are called as a genomic library right we'll see the other definitions of the genomic uh, uh, library in this here in this a set of recombinant clones that contain all the dna present in a an individual organism is called a genomic library you see collection of recombinant clones which will represent the entire genome genome of organisms in parts and parts right collection of large number in an appropriate vector system in which random fragments of genomic genomic dna have been inserted so the size of the dna fragment will uh, demands the different uh, vector as i told you if the size of the G G dna fragment is 5 kb you can use the plasmids if the size of the fragment dna fragment is 20 kb you can use the uh, lambda phase replacement vectors is yes or no very large number of recombinants which together contain complete collection of all the all of the dna sequence in the genome here a large number of recombinants which together contain complete collection of all of the dna sequence in the genome what we are doing we are fragmenting the entire genome it depends on the method if you are doing restriction digestion with the exonucleated recognizing rest restriction in the nucleus you get the 4.1 kb so 4.1 kb fragments are inserted into the clones right so they are together representing the entire genome you see a collection of clones sufficient in number to include all the genes of particular organism right so you can uh, based on the size of the size and based on the size of the uh, fragment you will be knowing how many clones are how many recombinant clones are required to required to have a complete genome right suppose as i told you it is a 50 kb so fragment length is 4.1 right roughly we require a, a 12 clones 
12 clones, 12 recombinant clones are required to represent the entire genome of organism in parts and parts. Right? This is all about the genomic library. Hope you understand. If at all you like it, and if you want more from my channel, you can subscribe. That's a Dr. K. Prem Primer. And no restriction on sharing. And you really like it, try to give a thumbs up and write to me if you have any issues. Thank you all. See you again. Until then, bye-bye.